Praise the Lord, everybody. Glory to God in the highest. Good morning, good afternoon to folks. Thanks for coming on this morning. Jump on in. Listen, I do believe I've got a word of divine encouragement this morning. Not just a hang in there word. This is a word I believe that will help strengthen, encourage uh, you in your journey whether it's related to the present matter at hand or whatever issue that you may be facing in life. Um, this is, I believe, a now word of encouragement. And so come on and jump in just for a few moments. We'll be on and off um, quicker than you can imagine. So come on down. If you know somebody who'd like to connect by, by telephone, please have them call into our, to the number. And of course, we're on Facebook and Periscope. And uh, praise the Lord. Come on in, everybody. Glory to God. Hey, what's happening? What's going on? Hey, Carolyn, good afternoon to you. Nadia, blessings to you. Regina, good afternoon. Come on in, folks. Glory to God. Bless his name, Tawanda. Good morning. Good afternoon to you. Uh, Cleo, good afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. Come on in. Listen, I, um, I dare say, do, you, do your friend a favor and uh, hit him up real quick with this and ask him to come on. Um, I believe it'll help them um, as well. So why don't you do that, everybody? Just hit that share button one more time, all right? Invite your friends and invite your followers. That'd be, that'd be great. Praise the name of Jesus. Glory to God in the highest. He's worthy. Absolutely, Debbie. He's worthy. He's worthy, everybody. He's worthy. Glory to God. Thank you for coming in, folks. Appreciate that very much. Let's see if I can get my page to load well there. Hey, Mel, good afternoon to you, my friend. Brother Simon, blessings, man. Come on in, everybody. Praise the Lord. Trying to share this to the um, King's Cathedral page. Uh, not been successful doing that just yet, but we'll figure out how to get that over there for everybody. Come on in, folks. I will exit those pages. All right. Good afternoon, folks. Thanks for being on today. Jesus is alive. And I wanted to pop in here and just share this word of encouragement. As I was being encouraged by the Lord this morning, um, uh, early this morning, and then um, in the later, latter part of the afternoon, same thing started to happen to me. And I said, well, why would I hold on to this if I could share it with other people, right? And so I want to encourage you today. My brother Emilio, blessings, man. Good to have you on. I want to talk about... Um, I want to talk about this afternoon um, really four things that you do not want to do in a crisis. Four things you do not want to do in a crisis. And, um, and conversely, it will speak to the four things that we need to do in a crisis. Now, though the, we are presently facing a crisis in, 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 with this pandemic, um, what I want to share with you um, um, most certainly applies to the here and the now, but this also applies to any other area that we are um, challenged with. And just to make sure I've got the right people on, Brother James, I want to, I want to ask a question. How many of you are facing something that you would describe as um, rough waters right now? How many of you would who would who would say, you know what, I, I am facing some rough waters right now? That's not for everybody. Not everybody's going through something, but but if that's you, just type in that's me. Type in that's me. I just want to make sure I got the right folks on today, right? Yeah, I'm facing some rough waters. Why don't you just type in? Yeah, that's me. I, I got, I got some, I got some, got some rough waters I'm dealing with right now. Type that in. 
And if it's not you, Amelia, if it's not you, why don't you type in, I know somebody who's facing some tough waters right now, right? <laughs> I would even go as far as saying, if you are if you are really about it and not just talking about it, if you're really about life, if you're really about trying to achieve, overcome, if you're trying to do better for yourself and for your family, for your community and your world, you're facing some rough waters. I would argue that the only people that aren't really, really hitting, hitting up against some walls are people who aren't doing much of anything. You know what I mean? So, so if you're really trying to accomplish something, if you're trying to secure the bag, if you are trying to uh, restore, have things restored in your family, in your home, your life, your your finances, your your health, you 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 got to be facing some challenges. You know what I mean? But I, me too, and I know somebody. Right? Me too, and I know somebody. Praise his name. Right? So so in this in this brief live today, I want to um invite you to go with me um over to the gospel according to Matthew chapter 14. Um I think I just saw my 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 friend and great civil rights leader James Vincent on. Uh, thank you for popping in, sir. Good afternoon, everybody. All right. The gospel according to Matthew chapter 14. Now, God, may you give us revelation knowledge today. We ask you for that. And we ask you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. All right. Here we go, folks. Now, we're going to talk about the four things you and I um, do not want to do in a crisis. And conversely, the things that we do want to do will be made evident in that same process. The Gospel of John chapter 14 and verse 24. Matthew chapter 14, verse 24. I hope you have your text. Just come on in. Just for a few moments, we're going to be sharing these things. But the boat was already over a mile from land, battered by the waves because the wind was against them. Now, one thing I want to make note of in this story, it speaks, of course, Peter walking on water and, and so forth. But I want you to note that that Many trials occur as we are on our way somewhere. Trials show up seemingly that to bring an interruption and a disruption to our process, right? We're on our way somewhere. We've got a goal in mind, a dream in mind. We've got um, a, a restorative situation that we're looking to, to accomplish in mind. And then we find ourselves when the storms hit. Now, for you and I, um, in this, you know, as we're walking through some stuff, we have to recognize that when you are about something, you can you can make make book on that that there shall be a challenge to your goal, right? There's going to be a challenge to that, a challenge of of money switching up on you, a challenge of people acting funny, you know. Um, a challenge of um, unforeseen um, um, requirements or obstacles that come up, right? And so, so that's part of the process. And here in this story, the guys are on a boat and they're already a mile out from land. I'm in Matthew chapter 14 and verse 24. But the boat was already over a mile from land, battered by the waves, because the wind was against them. And three in the morning, he came to them walking on the sea, Jesus. I want you to put a note somewhere that, that no matter what's happening, no matter where you are in your journey, in your process, uh, Jesus will come in this moment. Are you hearing me? I would argue he is never not in your moment. But Jesus shows up while they're over a mile out in the sea, 
middle of the night, three o'clock in the morning, wind and waves are beating on the boat, and then Jesus comes. I want to encourage you with that today, that in the midst of this difficulty, you may not be able to see him, you may not be able to trace him, but Jesus is present. How do I know that? For the Bible says, not only is he the same yesterday, today, and forever, but the Bible says that he would never leave us nor forsake us. That means in the midst of the midst of the midst of difficulties, Jesus is going to be present. Glory to God. Verse 26. When Jesus saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. Immediately, Jesus spoke to them, have courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Number one thing that we do not want to do in crisis is live off of fear. We don't want to live off of fear. Right? Don't live off of fear. In other words, we're so used to living like that in some cases, that's just normal. And we just kind of feed off of that to a certain degree, but it's killing us, quite honestly. At a minimum, it's killing your faith and killing your, your progress and stopping you in your tracks. That's a fact. Shutting down creativity. Shutting down the get up to get after it kind of feeling and emotion. Right? Um, living on, on living off of fear. So, so number one thing that we don't want to do in crisis is live off of fear. We would argue and say fear is normal. I would suggest to you that 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 although fear is 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 relevant in a situation, fear is not normal if you're going to live in victory. In other words, I may have a, a physiological reaction to something, to some news or to a situation, but I, I can't live off of that. I can't sit there and say, hey, fear, come hang out with me. Hey, fear, I'm just going to, you know, you and I are going to just kick it. We, that can't be. I just, I can't, I, that, that cannot be. Right? That cannot, that cannot be. All right? On Periscope, are you hearing me okay on Periscope? Excuse my my reach there, right? I, one person said they couldn't hear, right? You can't, you can't live on fear. Now, again, I want to I want to invite you in for a moment, and and I know that there may be debate about this, but um, do do not do not please do not sit there and make bedfellows, if you will, with fear. That's just that's that we're not doing that. You know what I mean? We're not we're not doing that. And there's ways to counteract that, but you got to recognize I'm not living off of that, right? I'm not living off of that. Glory to God, right? I'm not living off of that. All right. So let's go a little bit further here. We're in Matthew chapter 14, verse 27. Just talking about the four things. If I if I may, I'm going to add a fifth, five things, right? That we don't want to do in a time of crisis, because they are in a crisis. Verse 28. Peter said, Lord, if it's you, command me to come to you on the water. Number two on our list. You don't want to disobey in a time of crisis. You don't want to disobey. Right? You don't want to disobey. In other words, not that it needs explanation, but allow me anyway. In other words, what you have been directed to do, feel you should do, direction you should take, but more importantly, that which you know to be the right thing to do at this point, in this moment, is what you need to do even in a crisis. Right, even in a crisis that does not give us um, 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 pause 
in our obedience track. You know what I mean? You just can't do that. You know, and I'm laughing about it because I don't know how many times I feel I felt like I was off the hook because of whatever emotion I was in the middle of. Let's take it to this quarantine as it relates to your diet. How many of you that are watching have had opportunity and have succumbed to the temptation of eating more or eating um, things you would not normally eat because you are in the pandemic crisis? If that's happened to you, just type in me too. Me too. Me too. Type in me too. If you if you found yourself, right? Now you know you shouldn't. You know you 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 weren't doing that in the past. You knew that um that's not gonna go well for you, right? But because you are in a crisis, this is opportunity where you know I can have a little extra. Now I'm not gonna sit here and tell you I haven't had Doritos. I'm gonna tell you I have I've had Doritos. But I didn't have to eat the whole bag, you know what I mean? <laughs> right? And so in the midst of the challenge and the crisis, folks, you cannot disobey. We can't disobey, you know? I mean, we could flip that and say in a crisis, we must obey. But you get my point, right? I'm working from the negative here so we can get the, get the understanding a little clearer, I think. Right. So so in the midst of the situation, obedience is still the order of the day. Right. And when I'm talking about obedience, I'm talking about doing the things that you know to do. Right. Doing the things you know to do. You know, there are certain things that need to get done. Get it done. Right. In this crisis, stop the madness, you know. Glory to God. Stop the madness, right? <laughs> yeah, size is relative, though. You know, this is a big bag. You know, this is a party size bag of Doritos. And then you got these other little bags and everything. But praise his name. All right, let's go a little bit further, right? We're talking about the things not to do in the term, time of crisis. Matthew chapter 14 is our is our text. Now, now I'm encouraging you, please. I, again, I beg of thee. To, to lean into this and don't dismiss this moment because these could be the tools that you could utilize to, to not just survive the crisis, but thrive in the midst of the crisis, right? And as it were in the days of Daniel, come out and not even smell like smoke, all right? So, so Jesus told Peter to, come on, man, let's go, Right? And Peter climbed out the boat. Peter started walking on the water and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the strength of the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Man, that's a good prayer. Three word prayer. Lord, save me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that one more time for myself. Lord, save me. Bless his name. But number three on our list of things that we we um, we cannot do in the midst of a crisis is to break focus. Somebody type that in for me, please, on Periscope as well, if you wouldn't mind. You don't want to break focus, right? You you the the power of unbroken focus cannot be underestimated. The ability to concentrate despite all the distractions, all the problems that are going on. One must remain focused. Come on, I want everybody to type that in, please. The word focus. You must focus. Bless his name. You must focus. Man, I feel God's help in the middle of the afternoon right now. I feel the help of God. You know what? You know when I say that? Wendy, you know when I say that? I say that, I say that because I really feel. I feel God's presence, but I feel that God's presence is for those that I'm sharing this with right now. I'm telling you, there's a word in that for somebody. You've allowed distractions to disrupt your focus. 
And when you lose focus, man, you will you will you will diffuse your energy in multiple directions and you won't accomplish anything. May I take you to the NBA court for a moment? 10 feet, I think it's 10 feet from the front of the rim on a basketball court is what they call the foul line. And at the foul line, it's called a free throw. In other words, you get a chance to throw that basketball into that hoop, uncontested. It's a free throw, right? But you notice behind the basketball rim, even on the sides in the stadium, there will be people who will be holding up signs, yelling and screaming, talking about your mother, right? Calling your names for one purpose, which is to break your focus and your concentration so you miss a free throw. I'm here to tell you, there has been numerous times in my own life for sure where I have missed a free throw in life because I allowed myself to lose focus. Can I can I repeat that? I allowed myself to lose focus. I let hurt feelings get in the way. I let people's attitudes get in the way. I let the weather get in the way. True stories. I let um, negative comments get in the way. I let positive comments get in the way, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> I let, I let how I was feeling in any given day and time get in the way. How many of you would say, you know, that's happened to me too, right? That you let, you let things get in the way. If that's happened to you, say, yeah, yeah, just, yeah. I mean, Y-E-A-H. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's me. Yeah, I, I did that. Some of you might be doing that right now, letting things get in your way. It's about, listen, y'all, the power of unbroken focus. Right. The power, you know, you know, you know, when I think about laser speaks of a concentration of light into the smallest um, um, area possible. And when you do laser surgery, that is light, essentially getting in in between within cells. I mean, that is power. Right. But the same light, folks, that illuminate a room is the same light that actually can cut flesh when it's concentrated, right? And so if you will maintain focus despite the wind, despite the waves, despite the naysayers, you're going to find yourself in a better place in terms of your victory sooner and better, and you'll be in better shape in the end. Glory to God. Now, we could criticize Peter here in Matthew chapter 14. Intense, in, intense interest or activity towards your video. <laughs> Appreciate that, right? We could look at Peter and say, man, Peter, why did you, why did you mess up like that? But there were 11 other guys that we know of who were in that boat, who didn't even have enough courage to get out the boat, you know? And so how are we going to let somebody who's not even trying to do what we're trying to do get all up in our Kool-Aid and don't even know the flavor? That That's not right. That's not right. When I look back, this is a moment of, of self-pity, if you don't mind. I'm going to get my little handkerchief together here. When I look back at the number of times I have allowed a single sentence from somebody to discourage me, to depress me, and to cause me to lose momentum, I promise you, man, that is a sad, sad state of affairs, right? I'm not talking about somebody who's, you know, who's in your life to really help you and critique you and so on. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about just, you know what I'm saying, you know? Oh my God. You know, you have a financial goal. You've got a financial plane. And you, listen to me, you let an advertisement from a store, watch this now, of advertisement from a store cause you to break focus with your financial plan and you go over there and charge something 
and mess up your whole finances because you had a weak moment? Stop playing, <laughs> right? Come on, come on, come on. Somebody put some dollar signs in there for me. Put some dollar signs in there for me because you know that's the truth. You had a plan. You had goals. You had dreams. I'm going to be here this time next year. I'm going, my credit's going to be so, so over the top. It's not even going to be registratable. Registratable? Registerable. Registerable, right? It's going to be 1100 <laughs> The true credit expert is on, online there. So I said that for her benefit, Ms. Dolores Sherman. <laughs> it is not even registratable. You hear me? It's going to be, what? But, but, a, but a sale from Macy's, come on now, got you all messed up. Help us, Jesus, right? Cleo, help us, Lord. Mess, messed us up, right? But here the key element is we let it do that. No one can make you do anything. You hear me? So somebody, bless his name. Glory to God. I got a sister here testifying that she got healed on Sunday. She said, Bishop, when you pray for me on Sunday, what happened on Sunday? What happened on Sunday? I can move my legs and it don't hurt. My hands don't hurt. Thank you, Jesus. Bless his name, Paula. Come on, give him praise. He's worthy all by himself. All by himself. Glory to God. <clears throat> Let's go a little bit further here. Now, let me see if I can do something here. Um... Anybody know how to get the comments back? Let's see. I lost a comment. Oh, here we go. Let me see. Can I help? Nope. I lost the comments. They, they swiped left on me and I lost them. So I can't even see your comments now. But you hear my point, right? So, so, so you can't allow things to disrupt you when you're on your way somewhere. And Peter in this situation, let um, natural events, hear me folks, you want to put this down in quotation marks somewhere, natural events throw him off from living in a supernatural realm. That just blessed my life when I heard that. He let natural events, natural occurring events, Throw him off his supernatural realm. I don't have time for that. How about you? I'm not doing that. How about you? Glory to God. No, uh -uh, I'm not doing that. Right? I'm not going to let natural occurring events. You know, something happens. Okay, it happens. It happens. So what? Just because it happens doesn't mean that I got to stop my supernatural mindset. I got to stop my focus and I'm not doing that. I can't come off the wall to attend to everybody's whatever, right? You got to be the same way. All right, so so we're not going to live on faith, on fear, right? We're not going to disobey direction. We're not going to allow focus to be broken. And let me add this one in here, okay? Here's number four for you. In the midst of that, um, you can't stop moving. You can't stop moving. Come on, someone put that in the comment section for us, please. Oh, found it, got it back. Thank you. Right? You can't stop moving. That's a critical element, folks. You cannot stop moving. Number four, you cannot stop moving. You got to keep it moving. I remember this situation. I won't call his name because I'm sure he's still living. And um, <laughs> it was an interesting situation. I mean, we were little kids too, you know. And I got in a fight and I, I hit this guy on a basketball court. I had to be, I don't know, eight or nine. You know what I'm saying? This is going back 50 years. You hear me? 50 years. And um, my brother said to me, he said, you know, and I started to run. And I could outrun this guy for sure. He was older than I was, but it was no, he wasn't going to catch me. But I stopped running. 
And when I stopped running, Emilio, that's when he hit me. Prior to that, he couldn't get near me. Folks, we get tracked down, beat down, run over, not because the enemy is so big and bad. It's because we stopped moving. We stopped moving toward the goal. We stopped we stop moving toward the dream. We stop moving toward the outcome. We stop moving toward the, toward, toward, toward the mountain that we're going to have to overcome. All because of natural occurring events, situations, people, concerns. Just because it's a setback doesn't mean it's supposed to stop you from making a comeback. May I say that again? Just because I had a setback that doesn't mean I have to stop in my comeback. It just means I got to refuel, refocus, um, relearn some things maybe, right? But I can't stop moving. Bless his name. Somebody type in the miracle is in the movement. Come on, type that in. Type that in, put it in quotation marks. That's the name of the next book that's going to drop for me. The miracle is in the movement. Come on, type it in Periscope, Facebook, help me out. The miracle is in the movement. Right? The miracles in the movement. And again, I don't want to appear uh, unemotional because those closest to me know that I, I am most certainly emotional and can get in my feelings <laughs> quicker than I'd like to admit. But the fact of the matter is, I cannot decide what I'm going to do based upon how I'm feeling in a, in a moment. I've got to make movement because my miracle gets released in my movement. My miracle comes as a result of my obedience, of my, of my falling forward. It doesn't come just because I stayed in the boat. It doesn't come because I, I didn't speak to the mountain. The miracle happens when I open my mouth. The miracle happens when I go do what I'm supposed to do, right? And many of us, historically speaking, of course, many of us have failed to receive, achieve, overcome, break through, not because the mountain was so big, not because the devil was so bad. It was simply because we let something or someone stop our movement. You can't let no stop your movement, right? I'm an online entrepreneur. I cannot stop my movement based upon, based upon the thousands upon thousands who didn't buy my book. I got to put it back out there anyway. Why? Because there's, there were thousands who bought the book, right? I can't, I, can't, I can't stop dreaming the dream because right now I'm living my nightmare. I got to keep dreaming my dream, whatever that might be. Are you hearing me, right? You got a few more moments? So, so, so in a crisis, we cannot disobey. We cannot lose focus, right? We cannot live on fear. And we cannot stop making movement. You got to make movement. Bless his name. You, you, you got to make movement. Right? Because the miracle is in the movement. The miracle is in the movement. Right? The miracle is in the movement. All right. Number five. You ready? Here we go. Number five is... Um, How do I say this? Let's read verse 31. I mean, Matthew chapter 14, verse 31. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught hold of him and said to him, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Number five is, cannot, cannot doubt. Did you hear me? Cannot doubt. Now, let's, let's, be, let's be armchair philosophers and theologians for a moment. Why would Jesus upbraid Peter for abandoning his faith and doubting if 
doubt wasn't under his control. Come on, we need to, we need to, we need to, we need to pop that a minute and think about that, right? You know, why, why would Jesus rebuke him for doubting if doubt wasn't under his control? The question is, or the answer I would think is, he rebuked him because Peter chose to abandon faith and to doubt. I know that doesn't sound fair, right? Doesn't sound fair, but it is a choice. You hear me? Come on, somebody type that in for me. Doubt is a choice. Doubt is a choice. Bless his name. Doubt is a choice. You hear me? Doubt is a choice. I can choose to believe God and keep it moving, or I can choose to doubt God and stop right there, right? Again, this whole life is designed, if you will, uh, it's, 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 a, it's an encouragement that I got that I'm trying to share with other people, but I hope it has, has, has relevance in your life. Doubt is a choice. I can choose to doubt God or I can choose to believe God. I can't even rest on the fact that it's so hard right now. It's so hard to believe God. So hard to believe God, right? I can't even. I mean, God does not give us, give us, give us, give us that latitude in order to do that, right? He doesn't give us that latitude because because once we know, once we believe. What the Lord is saying to us in any given situation or circumstance, we have a choice to make. Am I going to believe what God says and follow through accordingly, or am I going to doubt? I, what, listen to me. What I just said in the last 30 seconds, I so wish I could erase that from this video and erase it from your memory because I do not like what I just said. <laughs> I do not like it. But it is the truth anyway. It is painful, right? I can believe God or I can choose not to believe God, right? He asked Peter, Matthew chapter 14, Brother Robert, he asked Peter, he said, Peter, you of little faith, why did you doubt? That's number five on the, on the list of things we cannot do in the middle of a crisis. You cannot afford to be a doubter. How many how many of you that are listening would like would like to to, to hear? To hear my, my antidote for doubt. If you, if you want to hear the antidote, just type in, say so. Just type in the words, say so. Right? If you want to, you want to hear the, the antidote for doubt or how to handle doubt, just, just, just type it in. Because I'll tell you right now, y'all, I will tell you right now. There are some decisions and some moves that 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 uh, you know I've got to make that my natural mind is screaming. It's it is doing what Peter's doing, saying, "Boy, you should have stayed in that boat." <laughs> you know what I mean, right? And I'm sure you're facing a few things too. So so. So Renee, I, I'm going. I'm going to say so. Amelia, I'm going to say so. This is how you handle doubt. You might want to turn the page on this one, so you can make sure you get it, y'all. All right. And again, you 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 line it up with your own life and so forth, and your own understanding of things. But let me tell you how it works. Um, since doubt is a choice, I can choose to believe or not to believe. I have to recognize where is my doubt coming from. 
if I were putting it down on paper, that would be A. Where's my doubt coming from? Is it, is it coming from my own lack of ability to figure out something? Is my doubt coming from other people? You know, is it coming from the fact that I've never done the thing I need to do? You know, I got to understand where it's coming from. Then two, I have to recognize that doubt is based in the emotional realm. It's part of my emotional makeup. My mentality, perhaps you might say. Right? That's important to know. Because I can still have doubts about something. Because my natural mind cannot figure out how I can sustain myself and walk on water. Right? So my natural mind is saying, dude, this does not make any sense here. H2O cannot support my frame. I am going under. You know, right? So my natural mind is saying that. So, so number two is in order for me to recognize, uh, to, to, to defeat doubt, I have to know that doubt is really a mindset. It's a mindset. And I do not, I do not have to go with it unless I choose to. In other words, I don't have to let my emotions dictate my next motion. Right? I don't I I mean I'm under that control. I don't have to allow my emotion to dictate my next motion. You know how many people are in jail today because their emotion dictated their next movement? You know how many dreams were never birthed? Dreams never realized because people got caught up in, in their emotions, how many people quit things and businesses and relationships and marriages and and friendships and churches because of an emotion, right? And so this is important, y'all. I mean, I want you to get this. You decide what you're going to do with it, but am I going to allow my present state of mind to determine my next movement? Am I going to let my emotion is like a like a wave James says. Am I going to let my emotion like like a wave am I going to let my emotion determine my next movement? I might get seasick in the process, but I'm still going due north, northwest, southeast. I'm going to that latitude and that longitude, wave or no wave, right? Even if I, I may even question whether I'm going to get there sometime, but I still got to keep rowing. I still got to keep moving, right? So, so when it comes to doubt, we have to know where it's coming from. Say, okay, I'm, you know, I'm questioning myself right now because of my insecurity, because of my lack of this or not enough of that, right? All right, I see where it's coming from. And then, all right, now am I going to let that... That feeling dictate my faith. The answer is nay, right? <laughs> so, so, so that's how you deal. That's how you deal with it, right? But then check this out. The third element, though, which goes back to the miracle of the movement, is I got to go back and do either the last thing I did or the next thing I need to do, right? And as I do the next thing I need to do, guess what happens? Confidence comes. Strength comes. My conscience is clear. Knowing God, I'm obeying you fully to the best of my ability. Right? And when that happens, guess what? I get my momentum there. I get my, my, my mojo. You know what I mean? I get, I get the big mo going. I get some momentum. Right? And all of a sudden, things start to work out and things start to fall into place a little bit more. And, right? And what happens, though? If I do all of that and I still fail, but guess what? I'll fail faster. I can get that out the way. And then I can realize, oh, okay, let me try it a different way next time. I hope that's helpful to you. All right, I hope that's helpful to you. And so, folks, um, those are the five things that we cannot do in crisis if we're going to win.
let me turn it into a positive statement. Here are five things that you and I need to do in crisis. Number one, we have to live based upon our faith, not based on, on our fear. Number two, we must obey the last instruction we got. Number three, we have to maintain focus. Number four, got to keep it moving. Number five, number five, believe God for the outcome. Believe God for the outcome. Praise his name. I hope that was helpful. Um, and I hope that was encouraging to you. And again, I mentioned it. I mentioned this at the risk of, of oversharing. But I mentioned this because, you know, when you're, when you, when you're, feel called to or in a leadership perspective or role, you gotta face some things that are that are that are bigger than you. If you're gonna make if you're gonna if you're gonna lead people or if you're gonna make changes in your own life. And um I needed some encouragement. And guess what? I got my encouragement, bless his name, as I just wait upon the Lord. Man, I had my hand across my face like this a million and just waiting and I felt the download of God come in this particular area. And so I believe that'll be helpful to you. You know, I believe it'll be helpful to you. If you'd like to share, you'd like to sow, please, the cash, the, my cash app is up there. Um, I can put it up here as well, if that will be helpful to you. Um, but please, by all means, what I want you to do more than anything else is take stock of what's going on in your life, where you're at. And let's start walking on water, y'all. The best is yet to come. Amen. The best is yet to come. Now, hopefully tomorrow, I'm going to come back around the same time. And um, we'll see what the Lord says then. Or what I perceive the Lord is saying then. And then you and I can just grow together in Jesus' name. I hope you are you are observing the social distancing protocols. Um. And I hope you are taking care of yourself. If you if you find yourself in the category where there are, um, uh, how do you say, uh, pre pre existing conditions um, that that can make you more vulnerable, I pray that you will not only um, walk without fear in this regard, but that you'll also work on the underlying conditions as well. Because Jesus is the healer and Jesus is still healing people today. Amen. All right, folks. Um, I'm going to let you go there. Um, the cash app's up. The PayPal link is up. If you'd like to sow, that'd be fantastic. Um, I believe that sowing enables you and me to anchor in what we're hearing. It's not a tip to me. Uh, it will encourage me in that regard, but it's not a tip, you know. I like what he said there's on my tip of, you know, <laughs> don't do that. Um, but when you sow, you need to know, according to Galatians chapter six, verse six through 10, um, you are, you are, you are guaranteeing the ability to hold the revelation that you receive, right? You cannot hold a revelation that you do not invest in, Right? And so um, that's why I offer that opportunity every single time. All right. And I'm going to continue to do that. All right. Love you all. Have a wonderful day. Remember, Jesus is alive. Amen. He is alive. All right. Hey, had, was this helpful to you? This was helpful to you. This, this type in. I got it. This type in. I got it. If, if this was if you think this was helpful to you, this type in. I got it to do that. Because again, I don't, you know, I don't believe everything that that I hear from the Lord is for everybody in the world. You know what I mean? I know it's for me. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I know it's for me. So um, I hope this was helpful to you. 
and um and um hit that share button maybe even listen to it again walk through it yourself personally amen all right all right listen love you all thanks for being on i appreciate that very much um please watch this replay please 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 if you if you can get the notes for yourself and it'll make a difference in your life all right love you all have a great day everybody bye now hey mom and dad blessings to you bye now thank you appreciate your encouragement Paula, Simon, Carolyn, Donna, Elder Russ, Tawanda, Renee, Marie, thank you, em Emilio, Shakita, blessings to you, Sophia, thank you, Mel, appreciate that, Amelia, blessings to everybody. Have a great day, everybody. Bye now.